Hey everybody. All right, so this right here is an Annabelle hydrangea, which is a hydrangea. Makes sense. This is an American hydrangea vine, which is not a hydrangea. You confused yet? Keep on watching, you'll understand. We had to move inside, but I'm Dave Marcinak with Revolutionary Gardens, and today I'm going to clear up a little bit of confusion for you. Uh, we're going to talk about how to understand botanical names so you can make a little bit of sense about why one's a hydrangea and one's not a hydrangea, but we call them both hydrangea. See, the thing is, common names, common names are great. They kind of get us on the close to the same page, but there's a lot of things that have some overlap. So that hydrangea, the Annabelle hydrangea, the hydra that's hydrangea arborescens Annabelle, which is the full botanical name for it. Whereas the hydrangea vine, it's not even in the hydrangea genus. It's actually called, what, where is it here? Schizophragma hydrangeoides. So how the heck does all this work? Let's go ahead and explain. So the first thing I mentioned was genus. So if you remember your eighth grade biology class, you remember that plants are part of a kingdom and that kingdom is subdivided like this with order, family, genus, and species. Now, when we're talking about plants, we don't really worry about anything but genus and species. So you know, our friend the Annabelle hydrangea, it's a hydrangea arborescence. Hydrangea is the genus, and arborescence is the species. Now, what about Annabelle? Because I said it's hydrangea arborescence. Annabelle, Annabelle is the cultivar, the cultivated variety, which means that it's something that's been bred into it usually to make it a special plant. Now, you'll occasionally see people refer to plants just by the genus, and that works because it's a descriptor for an entire group of like things. So I could say, hey baby, look at them, look at them boxwood. Or I could say, look at them buxus. It's pretty much the same thing. It's a general term that's going to describe a whole bunch of different plants within that same category. So that's the great thing about botanical names is you can learn them in little bites and little chunks at a time. So for example, um, you know, I see Quarsus palustris. It's a pin oak. And so from that, I can say, okay, well, Quercus, anything that's an oak is a Quercus, right? Absolutely. That's how this works. Um, you know, Acer. Okay, if it says Acer, it's a maple. I know that from the tag. If it says Miscanthus, it's a maiden grass. All those things kind of carry through. Genus is a great descriptor to let you know what it is that you're looking at. Now, the species, that's what dials it in and gives you even tighter detail about what's going on with that plant. Um, so, for example... You know, a red maple is an Acer rubrum. A um, Japanese maple, like a blood good maple, is going to be an Acer palmatum. So that kind of narrows it down, but a species doesn't stand alone on its own the same way that genus does. So I may refer to, hey, look at my field full of ilex, and that means that, hey, that's my field full of hollies, because there is, you know, ilex uh, glabra, ilex aquapurnii, various things like that. But I can't just say the species and say, hey, look at all those. And this is something that I run into as a design professional because I've had people come up to me and say, hey, you know, I know what plant I want. I want a japonica. Well, japonica doesn't really tell us what it is because japonica is usually in the species name. So, for example, just in Virginia, these are plants that have japonica as a species. There's camellia japonica, beautiful shrub. Uh, Pieris japonica, another gorgeous shrub, but completely different. Cryptomeria japonica. Um, if you're going to confuse a cryptomeria and a camellia, you're going to have one heck of a size difference because a cryptomeria wants to make easily 50, 60 feet. Camellia is not going to be anywhere near that. Uh, Skimia japonica, Akuba japonica, all these different plants all have japonica as the species. And if you're wondering how that works, well, your species name in a lot of cases means the same thing across a whole bunch of different uh, genus of plants. So for example, aurea means yellow. So if I say Hacanacloa macra aurea, you know that I'm referring to a gold or yellow plant. You may not know what Hacanacloa is, but you know what color it's going to be. Um, similarly, chinensis means that the plant comes from China. Japonica, like we've been talking about, comes from Japan they really pack in so much info. So glabra means smooth. So when I say Ilex glabra, which is an inkberry holly, it means that it's a holly with a smooth leaf, which if you're familiar with inkberry holly, it is. Uh, purpurea means a deep pink colored flower. So like this Echinacea purpurea, uh, it, which is purple cone flower is the common name for that, you know what that flower is gonna look like. Vulgaris means common. So if I look out front and I say, hey, that's a common lilac, you know that it's a Syringa vulgaris. Sometimes if you know your genus names, you can even deduce what's going on with that plant 
when something similar shows up in the species name. And so what I mean by that is let's take Hydrangea quarsifolia. So Hydrangea, we know that. It's in the genus Hydrangea, so it's some sort of Hydrangea that we know. Quercifolia, well, quercifolia sounds kind of like quercis, which is oak. So maybe it means it's got characteristics like an oak tree, and it does. Quercifolia means oak-leaved. So a Hydrangea quercifolia is an oak-leaf Hydrangea. Are you starting to see how this all makes sense? It's not just like crazy Scrabble letters thrown together. There's a reason behind why the genus and the species are what they are. Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a chart that shows all of these different uh, species names and what species and what they mean. Um, I'm going to put a link to that in the description so that'll take you to my site and I'll have a full chart there for you so you don't have to try to like take a picture of the screen or anything stupid like that. So we'll have that for you. Now the last thing that you often see with a plant name is your cultivar. So for instance with our hydrangea, the hydrangea arborescence Annabelle, Annabelle is our cultivar. What that means is that whoever developed that, um, they actually got to name it and that's what they chose. Um, Echinacea is another one that has just a ton of cultivars with it. So Echinacea, which is purple cone flower, um, you'll actually see Echinacea purpurea, and you may see Magnus, you may see uh, Kim's knee high, all these other different ones, and those are your specific cultivars. So that's how you can tell, you know, okay, I want one that's only going to get but so high, that's Kim's knee high. I want one that has, you know, nice big flowers on it, that's Magnus. So you can see it really helps you dial in and understand what it is that you're getting. So I hope that demystified the whole botanical name thing for you. With a little bit of study and practice, you'll know your Camisipras from your Cryptomeria. And if you found this video helpful, please, by all means, give me a thumbs up. Uh, while you're looking down there, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I've got a lot more videos like this coming. And I'm Dave Marciniak with Revolutionary Gardens. Until next time, get outside and play.